Hey there, it's John Vroman, FrontRowFactor.com. Welcome to 4 Minutes in the Front Row. Today I want to confess to you that over the years I have struggled with celebrating major holidays, whether it's birthdays, anniversaries, Christmas time. Let me give you an example of where I struggle. So my wife and I, as you may know, we have two young boys, and we'll get into a discussion about how do we celebrate their birthday, because we don't want to get them so many gifts they feel spoiled, but we want to get them gifts where they feel loved and appreciated. What's the right amount of gifts or the right dollar value? So we, we throw around ideas like, should it be $50 a child? Might be one gift, might be three, or should it be a number of gifts and the value doesn't matter? And uh, should it be the same number year in and year out? When it comes to our own celebrations, Mother's Day, Father's Day, our birthdays, we've tossed out the idea to each other, hey, how about we do no gifts? How about we just do travel? We'll do an experience together, a weekend getaway or a, some type of adventure. And while we say, yeah, sounds great, let's do that, no gifts, one of us inevitably ends up breaking that because we see a gift, the other person we know they would love it. So we say, oh, I know we said no gifts, but I got this for you. And now the next time we do it, it's like, we both know that we say no gifts, but it's kind of cool if you do get a gift. And sometimes you just always want to outdo the previous year, and there's a lot of pressure. I don't know if you can relate to any of this, but I often struggle with how do we celebrate these holidays. Sometimes it feels like there's so much pressure. So I want to share with you one of the strategies that we've implemented recently in our home, and I hope that you can share some of your strategies here as well. So however you're consuming this, if you're listening or if you're watching online or somehow you can comment or share, I'd love to know. How do you celebrate big holidays? So I'm going to give you one example that we have now used for our children, our two boys. So I reached out to my sisters and my parents and I said, listen, I would love it if for our boys' birthdays, that whatever else you decide that you want to do is great, but at the very least, if you could write them a short note or letter for each of their birthdays. I think that nothing would be more powerful than the written word. Now, I want to share with you that when we started talking about this as a family, stories started to emerge about the power of the written word. I remember a letter that I got from my uncle when I was a teenager, and I'll never forget reading those words, words of affirmation. It's something special when you get a, a letter from somebody that you respect and care about uncles and aunts and grandparents and special people in our lives, they carry with them special weight to their words. Uh, my dad told me a story about a letter that he received from somebody he admired and respected and how he still has that letter to this very day. In fact, as I record this video just a few feet from me, I've got every letter and every card that's been written to me for probably the last 20 years. And whenever I start to feel a little challenged in life, we'll say, I just go back to that file, open it up, and start reading through some of those letters. So when I think about some of the most important gifts I've received in my life, it's the power of the written word. Now, I've loved some of the other gifts I've received, the more material possessions or the engraved XYZ or whatever thoughtful gift it was. I've loved the adventures and the travel. But having those letters, having somebody declare their uh, love for you, uh, their respect for you, to point out things that they notice about you that are wonderful, the, that to me is one of the greatest gifts in the world. You know, I thought about my boys throughout their life having a collection of letters from their aunts, from their grandparents. Maybe we put it in an album. Maybe we take pictures of them and just keep them digitally for our boys to make sure they're always around. But to know what that, to know what people think about you and how they feel about you, there's something very special there. So I hope that serves you. I hope this maybe stimulates your thinking about one other way that you might be able to celebrate holidays in your life. How could you incorporate the written word into celebrations? And what other ways have you learned to celebrate with your families or people you care about? I'd love to know. So comment below or reach out to me uh, on social at John Vroman, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, however you want to connect. I'd love to hear from you. You can comment below on the YouTube channel or perhaps you're watching this on the blog, frontrowfactor.com. But let's share ideas about how to celebrate each other. And it doesn't have to be about the amount of money, but a lot of times it's about the intent that we bring and the thoughtfulness that we bring to the celebration itself. 
let's try to relieve some pressure and figure out some creative ways to love on one another and to really celebrate each other's lives. Until next time, keep living your life in the front row. Take care.